<clears throat> okay, so we've talked about the probability mass function. Now, the probability mass function is actually something that's uh, really only relevant in the case of discrete random variables, which we, which is where we're focused right now. But um, a more general concept that applies to all random variables, uh, these real valued random variables, which is called a distribution function. Now, when there is a mass function, the distribution function and the mass function can be are, are used somewhat interchangeably. One can be gotten from the other. Um, what is a distribution function? So for a random variable X, I usually um, abbreviate random variable as RV. So for a random variable X, The cumulative distribution function, and really the, the word cumulative is redundant or is unnecessary, but it does give some indication of what's, of how this works is that we're accumulating the probabilities. Um, cumulative distribution function, which sometimes written as CDF for cumulative distribution function, or just DF for distribution function, the cumulative distribution function of X is the function F sub capital X. It's a function from real numbers to zero to the unit interval. And the way it's defined is that for each value lower little X, it's equal to the probability that the random variable X is at most little x for all real values. So all this is saying is that what we're gonna do is the the value of the distribution function at a particular value X is that we want to add, a, essentially add up all of the probability that the random variable is at most is less than or equal to X. That's the value at that function. So what the function actually looks like let's, let's illustrate. So this would be the mass function on the left. And let's suppose that these are what the probabilities look like in the mass function case. Um, I need a bit more space here. So let's say it's a discrete distribution with just three values. Then what the distribution function is going to look like is call this one it's going to be zero up until this first point here then it's going to jump up then it's going to stay there for a little bit then it's going to jump up based on the second jump stays there a little bit, then it jumps up to one and it stays at one forever. Okay. So just to color code this a little bit, this jump corresponds to this height. This jump corresponds to this. And then this last jump corresponds to this. And those are the only probability masses. And so in between jumps, there's no increase in this cumulative distribution function. So some properties of distribution functions. So in general, so these are properties that hold in general. First is that F is non-decreasing. Let's let F be a distribution function.
F is non-decreasing, meaning that if that if X is less than or equal to Y, then F of X has to be less than or equal to F of Y. Second is that F is right continuous. Continuous from the right. And that means, so what does that mean? Um, realize here that when we look at coloring this in yellow, when we look at this going from a certain plot from the right towards this endpoint, it's continuous. But consider going from the left to this point here, there's an open circle here. There's a jump, there's a discontinuity there. And that discontinuity is a violation of what's called right continuity. F has left limits. So even though it's discontinuous at certain points, such as this point here, if you take the limit and approach it from the left, there is still a limit um, it just doesn't happen to be the same as the probability that the, the value of the function because there's a jump at that at that point. And if we take limits specifically as x goes to minus infinity, then this function is zero as we approach minus infinity and is one as we approach infinity. So for example, if we have a Bernoulli random variable with probability P, what's the distribution function look like? Well, the distribution function, even though the random variable itself only takes values zero and one, the distribution function is actually uh, defined on the entire real line, right? And it's zero up until the value zero. And then at zero, what happens is we have a jump. The jump, so this is one. The jump is two is actually the value of Q, right? Q is one minus P because Q is the probability that this random variable equals zero. So the probability of being less than or equal to zero, the only possible value that it can take is actually zero. So we jump up to the probability that the random variable equals zero, and then it's constant. There's no value in between zero and one that it can take. And then at one, it's gonna jump up another, that, another P. So that's at, at, at the value of one, the probability that, it, the, the probability that the random variable is one is P. And we accumulate the probabilities from the left. So there's a probability Q, which is one minus P. Then we have a probability P. We add those up and we get one. And then it's one forever after that. Something that'll come up throughout this course and we'll just define it here. Discuss it a bit more later is the concept of independent random variables. Two random variables. Call them X and Y are independent. And this is how we write it. X is independent of Y if probability that X is less than or equal to X, Y is less than or equal to Y,
is the product of the individual distribution functions for all values of x and y. So we'll come back to this as, it, as it's relevant throughout the course, um, but that is a notion of independence for random variables that is a bit different than our notion of independence for, um, for events. Okay, so this was a discussion in this chapter about random variables. We focus specifically on discrete random variables, which can be described in terms of their mass function. We have several examples of discrete random variables that we're, we're already familiar with and for which we can calculate the mass functions. And then once we have that mass function, we can also alternatively describe the distribution of the random variable in terms of its distribution function.